doesn't really matter what happened to get you to a divorce. There are a lot of common elements that we have to struggle with once you're there. There's times when you're hurting so much, you need time to process those emotions without necessarily causing collateral damage. We're back with Callie Cushell Wilson discussing her fascinating book, Weathering the Hurricane of Divorce. If you haven't watched part one, I encourage you to do so. Callie, in your book, you discuss staying on course and avoiding sirens during mm -hmm. the healing process. What are you talking about? Um, sirens are those dark thoughts that nag at you so that you can't sleep at night and images and fears that you can't shake. Uh, there might also be like the need for self validation, looking for love in the wrong places, uh, self medicating, uh, not necessarily hardcore drugs, but there was definitely a point where I relied heavily on coffee and Advil to the point where my stomach took the toll mm -hmm. because you're just at a point where you just have to keep going. There doesn't seem to be a point that you can take a breath or a breather, much less have a three meals a day. Uh, so it's very important to figure out healthy coping mechanisms. Some Sometimes I was more successful with those than others. I didn't get it all right at first, but there are concrete tools that can help. I was actually very blessed just coming out of college, having moved big stage change of life. And it was post 9-11 that I was dealing with constant grief and depression. So being a good Orthodox girl, I went to my spiritual father with my box of tissues and sobbed my way through confession. And my spiritual father wonderfully said, you know, he comforted me, but he said, I think you might have clinical depression. You know, I want you to go and see this doctor who was also an Orthodox Christian. And they took 23 year old Callie by the hand and led me through healthy living, which most college students don't do as we know. But there was a list, a sort of a cheat sheet of make sure that you exercise a few times a week, have your multivitamin, you have to eat three times a day, you make sure you sleep, but not too much. And then there was the orthodox side, the importance of prayer, journaling, um, just being part of a community and interacting. But those became my, as I said, my cliff notes, that whenever a hurricane would hit of any type, spiritual, I could go back to, and they really saw me through. And so that was something I wanted to put in a format that others could pick up, even as my daughters now hit adulthood and might not have me close by. It's like, it's in the book, honey. <laughs> I'm not available. Read the book. <laughs> Read the book. <laughs> but, um, and so that's, um, that's kind of the things that I see as, doesn't really matter what happened to get you to a divorce. There are a lot of common elements that we have to struggle with mm -hmm. once you're there. The gathering of the church is really mm -hmm. the gathering in a hospital where people come to be healed. So I'm glad that you went to the church itself. Any any other tools that you think you might mention? Are you list them in the, yes. in the book? I, um, I think that coming to the church, I, is very important. I think one of the elements of our Orthodox faith is also going to the desert, that it's okay to take some time alone. There's times when you need to go to the seaside or or park or just a, sac a sacred quiet space without anyone around you. I, I think that's an essential thing because there's times when you're hurting so much, you need time to process those emotions without necessarily causing collateral damage. I have a friend that turned a closet into a little prayer cubby with icons that she just knew if she shut the door, she could have some alone time. Um, there are a lot of tools as far as that goes. One of it, like we have the beautiful music and all of the podcasts of the Orthodox world these days. They might not be specific to Orthodoxy, but one of the things that helped me greatly when I was going through the the worst of the divorce trauma where you're just worried about how are my kids gonna do and you can't turn off images in your head 
I had um, come receive the light, your Ikona CD on my playlist. And it was like having you in the room with me. And I felt 18 year, years old again at Hellenic College. But um, it was like having family around and just ha drowning out the negative thoughts doesn't mean that you're not dealing with it. It's just when you're overtired, you can't process things. There's times when you just have to use positive reinforcement. Even our practice of fasting, that allows us to have the self-restraint and hopefully it, it's an exercise so that when we do hit a situation like divorce, hopefully we can control the words that want to just spill out of our mouths. You know, hopefully we don't throw ourselves into dangerous situations just because it might feel good at that moment and we're desperate to feel good again. And also fasting as a community gives that sense of being on a team. You can be at work, you can be at home, but you're all going through Lent together. You're part of a greater group. And it's very important at the end of that to also feast together. One of the, as the chair of family ministries at our home parish, I often say the highlight of our year is actually the agape meal after the Christos Anesti service that we host in which every member of the community is invited. There's no charge and we celebrate together because for those who don't have that family unit that is functional to go home to, that is really essential. Kelly, often a, as a couple experiences a divorce, which as you describe, uh, can become sometimes like surviving a shipwreck, mm -hmm. uh, children can be caught in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you guide and protect your own children? And what advice would you offer to others? Yeah, my children were very young um, when I initially, we were initially separated and each age has a different challenge and different, uh, even now they are grown and I think wonderful, incredible young people. They, you know, as we approach different stages of life, graduations, marriages, things like that, and they work through their own relationships with their extended family members, it's still kind of it's something they have to grapple with and come to terms with themselves. It's a, it's a long-term mm -hmm. <laughs> issue. Yeah. Um, with the girls, they definitely had to process their own emotions and every child's different with one of my daughters. And I feel comfortable talking about this because both girls helped me with the book project. <laughs> and I know yeah. that I have their blessing. You can do that, right? Um, sure. Yeah. But one of my daughters was really into pet therapy. Anything to do with an animal really comforted her. My other child was my artist. And so art therapy, getting her, just keeping her busy that way. And also, even though they weren't the most, you know, it, it took time teaching them to write their thoughts down, to talk. And when they behave badly, usually because they were in transition between households and testing boundaries, I had to learn as inconvenient as it might be, I had to hit the pause button on life at that moment. You know, it was often unfortunately in the middle of a family function, my brother's wedding reception or something, they would have a meltdown and I couldn't so say, oh, well, I'm gonna go dance. I'll deal with them later. You had, I had to stop, deal with it. There were times when they would rage and I literally would wrap them in a blanket, rock them and sing till I was louder, almost dealing with a child that was traumatized in a very physical way. Mm -hmm. And also putting my foot down and not letting them lash out or behave badly because they were hurting, validating their experiences, but saying, no, you're not allowed to hit me because you're hurting. You're not allowed to hit your sister. Uh, and, and also remembering often, it, I found that people sort of would say, oh, so-and-so is upset about the divorce situation, I'm going to coddle them and distract them. When really they just need, they were hungry, they were tired, there might've been something at school that was really bothering them. And, and to make sure those parts of parenthood don't slip through the cracks. Uh, also, going back to the wisdom of Solomon and the parable, uh, it's not parable, but the, the story where the real mother is told, 
you know, I can cut your child in half and you can each have half. And she says, no, I'd prefer the other woman to have my child than my child to be harmed. And that's the truth. If we tear our children apart through divorce and try and cut them down the middle, we just end up with dead children. It's a horrible analogy, but it, it's true. And I've heard people bemoan, oh, but I don't have my children with me this Christmas or this birthday. Celebrate Christmas on another day. Be old calendar this year. <laughs> you know, no child's going to complain about having two birthday celebrations. And so you can look on the positive and say, all right, I get to actually rest and recharge during this holiday time so I can be a better parent. Or I could be bemoaning, oh, I'm not there at this moment. I'm missing out. So it, it's a lot of about perspective. Well, it's a lot about being a good parent too. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're clearly, you forget yourself and now you're mm -hmm. really dealing. And one thing which you said beautifully is actually listening. Mm -hmm. You're listening to the child, you're observing the child and therefore you're attempting, not with falsehood, but mm -hmm. you're attempting to meet their needs uh, at that moment. That, that's beautiful. I um, would also, sorry, for, I would say one of the things it's also allowing and encouraging other people to be in their lives. Yeah. I could never, especially in this situation, be everything. But having grandparents or surrogate aunts and uncles, godparents, community, Sunday school teachers, teachers at school, just encouraging them to reach out to others and have them as part and develop their own relationships, one-on-one, -on -one, spiritual fathers um, and mothers. That made a big difference that when I couldn't necessarily be there, there were other people to pick up the slack. And once again, that goes back to the value of our church communities. Callie, let's talk about in a final question, uh, faith and doubt. Um, mm -hmm. You described how the healing process led you to real sincere moments of blind faith where you had to trust in the destination of salvation and trust in God to get you there without a clear lit path. Mm -hmm. What was that like for you? And has it made your faith even stronger? Yes. <laughs> of course, we'd like to, we, we want to say that we get stronger every day. But the truth is that, every, you know, we, we, I feel more like Peter trying to walk on water. I acknowledge that every time I lose eye contact with Jesus, I start to sink. Hopefully that happens a little less. And there is a confidence of when you go through a great heartbreak and survive, it's like, oh, it didn't break me. I can endure that incredible pain and I can get through. And whenever I have to say, whenever I hit that moment of, I just don't think I can go forth something an angel would appear and to the point where it might sound trite to someone else if you're trying to explain it like oh but that person called me just when i needed that phone call i got that mm -hmm. invitation to go out just when i knew that people i would normally have gone out with were out without me but somebody else invited me um a father chris showed up on a cruise ship with his family to that I was able to talk about my book this time last year when I hadn't had that opportunity and I felt that God opened a door right at that moment. And it's those things that the, the greater Orthodox Church is wonderful and has many tools, but it's those moments of grace and answered prayers that if I go back to um, in college, I was going back to Logan Airport, I had all of the presents and orders of the Bahamian family because they can't get things in Nassau. So it was like, we'll send them to Cali. She had like thick four big suitcases. <laughs> and I got, and I knew in my exhaustion post exams that there was no way I could lift everything from the taxi cab to the check-in desk. And it was such a hectic place. I'm like, I'm gonna lose all this stuff before I even make it home. So I just said, okay, God, Jesus, this is on you. I know you'll provide. I was tired enough not to overthink it. I just let go. And as the cab drove, pulled up at Logan Airport curb, my spiritual father from child, Father Nick Triadefalu, who was not in Boston at that time, he was in a, a, at a parish completely different, was standing on that curb with his nephew, Father Ted Barbas. And all they did was like, Callie, I got bear hugs. And they're like, we're going to carry your suitcases <laughs> to the counter. I'm like, 
And that sounds like such a like funny story. But if I ever needed an answered prayer, yes, God does step in just when you need him, if you let him. It might not be the way you think, you can predict, but that's what keeps faith strong. And um, and that's what's comforted me. Kelly, the author of Weathering the Hurricane of Divorce. Kelly, it's a fabulous book. I encourage everyone to go back and listen to part one of the interview if they haven't. And this is a book that people should have. Those people who have gone through a divorce, going through a divorce, and family members as well. Callie, tell us again, please, where can people get this excellent book? Um, it's available on Amazon and hard copy and Kindle, also at Hellenic College Holy Cross Bookstore, which is available online as well as on the campus. And I would, if the, I could make one request, if people wanted to ask how they could help, is just know the book exists. Mention it to your priest or buy the book. I'm not trying to do it as a plug, but okay. It, okay. it's just to help people know this resource exists is a help for the divorce ministries. You don't have to read the book, but maybe you give it to someone who's going through it or your church bookstore or your priest. We just need the word to get out there that people are not alone. Kelly, thank you very much for doing this. Uh, may God continue to strengthen you uh, as you help others, uh, whether the hurricane of divorce. Thank you.